Cool, cool. Good morning. Good morning. We'll get started in a few more minutes here. Hello. 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 Okay, Taylor, start. thank you. Yeah. Hey, Tom. Hi. Just we've got a couple of minutes here. Yeah, sure. Sorry, Mike. All right, Tom, you ready? Yep, sorry, let's make a start. Uh, let me share my screen. Hopefully you can see the meeting notes. Looks good. Okay. Um, okay. Oh yeah, announcements, let's start with that. So. There's a few people on the call, so hopefully the message was received by most. Um, Daylight Saving Time started yesterday in North America um, and will be in two weeks in most of Europe. So for the this meeting and next week's meeting will be 
up to this time, wherever you are. And then in Europe, it will be an hour later again. Um, which I think then means it's an hour later in the US. But to be honest, I get confused when I start thinking about it too hard. Um, so anyway, so the, thank you to, I think Lucina who's updated all the meeting invites. Um, so moving on to upcoming events. Um, we had a good chat through these last week, if I remember rightly. Um, is anyone planning on attending Connected America? Which is in two and a bit weeks. Okay. Um, then we've got the private five G and the Edge Summit. Um, Isn't that Telecom TV as well? Yes, it is. Yeah. So that's probably how they usually have virtual as well on that. Yes, that's true. Good point. Um, then we've got in a month and a bit, five weeks or so, uh, KubeCon in Amsterdam with uh, Cloud Native Telco Day, which is in person only and is sold out. All of the co located events are sold out. I believe. Um, the schedule for the Telco Day is now done. Um, I think Lucina, you were part of the, the the putting together of that schedule, so thanks for doing that. Um, and then, yeah, maybe something to discuss in a minute is this birds of a feather session in a bit more detail. Um, uh, Taylor's put together a bunch of good starting info for what we could do in that. Um, so rather than in, it, reading each of these individually, I think most of these we went through last week. I, I guess, are there any changes to people's views, opinions, participation, etc.? Uh, I want to go back real fast to the informal um, event at the KubeCon. I'd like to encourage people that are on the waiting list for Cloud Native Telco Day to come to the afternoon and be able be ready for birds of a feather. Possibly a shorter version instead of a you know, like a full presentation. They're not going to have a big screen and, and mic'd up or anything. So it's going to be more informal. But if we can set it up um, where it's more like a real birds of a feather, if they want, or at least a discussion about the topic. Yeah. So some way to tie that in and get, get the people that would have been there anyways to join us. I think that'll be good. Okay. Do you think we can use the co-located events team to maybe contact the people on the wait list and make them aware of this as a further session and, and kind of share our con you know, this working group's contact details so they can the people on the wait list can get in contact with us? Uh, I think we we can at least ask them. So if we can take a little bit of time and figure out the, you know, how we want to, what we want to say and, and where to send them and everything. Mm -hmm. Maybe even we could make like a Google form or something and say, hey, if, if you're interested in joining us for this informal thing and you had a, a topic to discuss, but something like that so that um, we can send over, here's what we'd like to do and 
for this informal thing and and then the team if they're okay with it they can contact them for us yeah yeah i just thought a couple of sentences here so this is nikolai yeah, he haven't been joining for a while. So uh, I'm I'm one of those people on the waiting list. The problem the problem is that the waiting list is for the whole uh, co-located event. So you don't really, I mean, there's no distinguishment. Okay, I'm on the waiting list for Telco Day. That's that's the way that I see it. I mean, I, I registered myself on Friday and I didn't get a chance to choose on which co-located event I want to join. Uh, anyway, that's one thing. Uh, the other thing is, um, uh, if, you, uh, if you have a control over schedule and you can add it as an item to, on, on the back of the schedule, like, okay, this, 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 and then at 2 p.m., birds of a feather, uh, open discussion, whatever you want to call it, a short description, people might be interested, I can see it and, you know. As far as the schedule, what do you, where do you mean? Are you talking about the official schedule? Yes, yes. I, I don't think we're going to make it onto the official schedule. So we're going to have to do, there's going to be some marketing that'll be needed to let people know. Um, now, during Cloud of Telco Day, we can communicate it. We can ask some folks there, can you please mention this, that there's going to be an informal meeting. But I, I doubt we'll be on the official um, KubeCon schedule. I can I mean, try to ask, but I, I don't want to depend on that. Yeah, I mean, if you're booking the room in any case, right? I mean, because you need the room, you cannot just do it in the hallway, I guess. Yeah, we may end up in uh, the, there's like some open meeting areas and stuff. Oh. We may, yeah, I, we're going to try to get a room, but there's, lots of things going on so if other than yeah. the if you're not part of the official sessions then it's more difficult to get a room so this may be like an open area where we take up at tables that are nearby each other and and then more of an open discussion okay. what was your um topic that's on the waiting list Oh, you mean the waiting list for the Telco Day uh, topics, right? Yeah. I mean, like uh, talks. Oh, okay, okay. I was I was like on the waiting list for the attendee. Yeah, I also submitted something as a co-speaker with uh, with a colleague of mine. You know, ISO Valent, whatever EBPF. I don't remember exactly. I can, I can check. Uh, All right. Anyway, that's that's not. Uh, yeah, that's not the. Uh... Uh, okay. Yeah, I think that the wait list Taylor's talking about is. So, for example, I present. I submitted a uh -huh. yeah, yeah, of course, PFP of course, for yeah. Telco Day and on the wait list for Telco yeah. Day. Yeah, yeah. Do you know if if it will be an accessible area? Because you know there might be you know passes only, you know. So if you're not allowed there, right, then... if you have a KubeCon pass then I, I think it's going to be possible to get where wherever we'd be for the informal. If you don't have a KubeCon pass, then... Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, you need to do the KubeCon pass, yes. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we would... Um, and I, I think uh, Lucina had some ideas of... Of, of a few of areas that may work at the at the place for an, like an open area. Um, we'll look at more into that. And then if we don't have a set location, we're gonna try to go to one of those and we would be communicating that in the, I think the, the day of Cloud Native Telco Day. And then if we can decide on it, a few days ahead, then we say that, and then just say, here's where we're going to be. But probably uh, one of the main things would be to decide we're going to announce our location on somewhere, like posting to whatever that could be Twitter, 
it could be to the mailing list. If you're not on that, I'd get on the working group and, and our Slack. And then we just say, please meet here. And, um, and then of course, during Cloud Native Telco Day for any folks there we can, attending, we can message. But if you're on the waiting list for the co-located event, um, attending, not presenting, but attending, but you do have a all X, you have a KubeCon pass, then as long as you can see those messages, then you can meet, meet up there. We'll do our best to try to get people available. And then um, I think a Google Doc for some type of a topic ideas and potentialist. I mean, I guess it's a potential attendance sort of thing so we can get a head count and stuff. But I think we need to run this more like a open discussion and then the a yeah. real birds of a feather where the present, the, I don't even want to call them presentations. They're just someone's basically like you'd have a whiteboard and someone writes, here's a topic I want to talk about and they get five minutes or 10 minutes or something. And then there's discussions about things. Um, besides our plan, if you didn't hear it uh, weeks ago, we were saying we may want to use part of this time as a working session to, do, to dig into some topics. Like maybe we want to work on the CNCF glossary and adding more terms that are important for the telecom networking, cloud native uh, telecom networking, or working through best practices that we pick or something like that. So it probably be split between an open discussions and, and some working session time. Okay. I have a related question for this meeting is, I mean, shall I wait for the end of the call and ask then or? No. Um, you can. Is it you said related? Is yeah, we can it's, it's add it as a new agenda item for discussion, or just go ahead. I don't. Yeah, yeah. My my question is more or less: Do do you have any rough statistics of, uh, like from from the previous telco days? Uh, is the how to say the the the, the interest of like you know, is it rising? I guess it is, but. I just don't have visibility. I mean, I'm a reviewer on the networking track for my main KubeCon, so I have visibility there. Um, uh, but um, I mean, it would be interesting. At least my my, my impression is that from the main networking um, track, like the telcos seem to be a little bit moving away. So they maybe move to this uh, pre-event, like all collocated event. Um, I don't know. It's just like is there a big interest or this? I mean, is it rising? That's that's the, the you know for for people to present on telco days. Hey. I'm not sure I quite fully understand, but in terms of so so we there were quite a lot of CFPs received for the telco day. I can't yeah. Number, yeah, I mean, is is the number of CFPs like you know significantly moving up? You know, compared to, for example, for the previous, for the Detroit, for example. Uh, yeah, good question. Um, that's something we can ask. I, I I can't remember what the number of CFPs was at the last two. No so, need for exact numbers. It's just like a trend. I mean, is it like going up or kind of? sitting on the same or I don't know it's just like a generic yeah um to be honest I haven't really looked and thought about it 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 seemed to me to be either going up or staying the same but mm, okay okay I'll, you know I wouldn't want to yeah, I wouldn't want to put my name against that statement <laughs> but I think I think that's a good question though it's just general, general kind of popularity and success factor yeah. Um, the 
I know that the last one and, and um, also this one, to an extent, there's a desire to have a virtual aspect. The very first one, we had both, and I think that was helpful. The last one, there was a lot of requests in North America. Um, I think the attendance would improve. Tra there's still there's a lot of travel restrictions right now, and there were there was some it, for the North America as well. But I think it's a, and uh, for a lot of people, it's even more restrictions this year. And there's people that want to be a part of it, um, but they're asking for a remote. And I think we have a pretty good split between North America and EU for telecom companies that are interested. Mm -hmm. So ideally for the cloud native telco day EU, I'm sorry, for North America, we can get some sponsors and interest and they'll will be able to offer the the virtual event. And I think mm -hmm. that'll pro if we're doing if if we can get that uh, get some more sponsors and stuff, then it should improve like going forward as well. So if we have a better attendance, even if part of it's virtual, then I think the interest of that and then the value that people see will cause it to have more the next year. Did you find something, Tom, as far as the... As no, I... so, so there was some post-event data that was shared after each about number of registered attendees and stuff like that, but um, nothing I can see at the moment which explain the number of CFPs. Okay, so for last year's Europe event, we received 43 CFPs. Wow, wow. Um, for this year's event, we received um, um, 39. So the European one this year was 39. Okay, so, yeah. Um, let's see if there was... And for the US event in the autumn last year was 28. So 43, then 28, then 39. Okay. So Europe seems to be more proactive <laughs> in the <Yeah>. field. <laughs> <clears throat> um, yeah, okay, it's interesting. Yeah. Great. So in terms of the the informal session, whatever whatever we want to call it, um, so the as well as the discussion we've just had about people on the presenting wait list potentially coming in, you know, starting a conversation about the topic they were due to present, there were these other. Um, these other ideas that, that that we discussed, um, I think last week. Um, just wonder if anyone's got anything else to add to those things. 
or any thoughts? Okay, so I think we've mentioned about where it's going to be. That's to be confirmed. Um, but, I, but just some something. Yeah, sorry, it took me a, a, a while to read, to read and. That's all right. Read yeah. Um, so, at least what what I'm seeing. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm just going to share a thought. I don't know how to how to exactly form or form formulated to the exact topic, but it's like, I'm seeing, at least from where I am, I'm seeing this, this trend where, you know, like uh, we get questions, are you certified with this or with that? And I, I mean, to me, it sounds like the industry is forming its own, um, how to say it, certification um, in between the different vendors, like the major players are, you know, sitting together and saying, okay, I work with you, you work with me, I certify you, you certify me, then I don't care about CNCF or guiding principles or this or that. And I mean, do we need to somehow at least talk about this or see what's what's out there and try to enumerate what we know? Or I, I don't know, you, it's like, you know, talking about competition, if you will, right? Some of the, some of the, um submissions and i'm I'm not sure what the cloud native telco day agenda is um i need to read through i'm not and I, i'm not a co-chair or a committee member on that but i know that some of the submissions that people were talking about were related to things like silva um the anika uh, project from elephant and and other things out there so it, it's that's happening there and and we're definitely looking at things and encouraging people to join and and talk about them so if do you know of others like nefio silva yeah. elephant anakit those would be other um groups that are working on similar things do you, do you know of other ones or is there anything in particular that you're thinking about? Uh yeah, I I I, I would point out OpenShift just like not 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 as a finger point, but like there's something that sticks out at least what I mean, like when, when I've been interacting with different customers and vendors and so on, it's it's always like, oh, by the way, do you work with OpenShift? And it's like seems to be the the baseline for a lot of people out there right so i don't know if this is exactly a like i mean if you can compare it to nephew for example right but uh, but uh, uh it's uh it, and i think, think I, <laughs> yeah yeah I, I think it's a great question um i think it's a great topic to discuss at the the kind of informal day but also um that there mm. is a yeah th there is a panel session um which is about project silver mm -hmm. um so it may be focused on kind of environmental things yeah um however one of one of the things that some of the participants in silver are quite keen on is having a better process for or a better approach to that interoperability certification conundrum mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, exactly. and i've no doubt that operators will have opinions they may or may not be willing to share as well on you know on the applicability or usefulness of the various approaches that have been taken over the years um, yeah, I, I think it's a great discussion point because it's it comes up every couple of years. You know, LFN tried to do it with uh, what was it called? OVP was it or something? Um, yeah. 
then Anika tried to help with you know with that and and, and now Silva and I think it's the same the same problems being um, tackled from different angles. So maybe it's something you know that kind of kind of falls into one or both of these points here. You know, almost like a, for the CNC CNF certification topic. Mm -hmm. A kind of wider question about um, certification in general. No. Maybe we should note that down. From what we can tell, um, Red Hat seems to have a certification um, that, well, it's, it's called CNS certification. So they have the platform testing where you can run OpenShift on your own, or you can run their cloud-based stuff so that you have <clears throat> more of if you're running the platform side as well. And then they have a CNF certification and both the badging as well as a set of tests. And it, they have a, a large portion of it. Um, I think it's probably the majority, but I'd have to look through the whole set of tests. I post a link to the GitHub in uh, Zoom chat, but the, a large portion was, it looks like the, the same names that were in the CNS certification test um, were used. They were, it's re-implemented, it's a different language, but co coverage for the same set of tests. And most of them I would say are generic um, with maybe little bits that are potentially some of those tests are a little bit different to be OpenShift specific. And then the other set of tests are not that are not essentially co copies or uh, re-implementations of the CNCF versions are OpenShift uh, best practices. So if you're doing this on an OpenShift platform, here's the things that you should do with your CNF. So from a influencing others to do um, do good things, I would say that that's a positive. Like that if we're leading, here's best practices and here's tests that we're doing. If others are picking those up and trying to utilize them, it can be you know, Red Hat is going to make sure anything works really, really well with OpenShift. Uh, Project Silva under the Linux Foundation Europe, you know, there's there's something there that they're, I would say they lacked what was happening potentially. This is my view from the outside. They lack what was happening in the different areas like Anikit and the CNS certification and the best practice that we're doing. And they wanted something else. I think Tom, you might have some, uh, potentially some input on, on that, but there's something that was missing or they wanted to add something or that when, when there's a fork or a new product that comes out, when there's an existing one that's similar, but not it's not an exact copy, then there was something missing usually. Of course, there are just straight up copies of you know, even physical hardware where someone reverse engineers everything and just tries to put out a competing product with no differentiation. I think for Annika, um, Silva, the OpenShift stuff, there's 
there's at least for part of it, there's things that are missing or they they want it to go differently. So that's why you have others. But maybe the there's probably a lot of room for uh, discussion around what was missing and what do you like over here? I know the nephios thing would be who's focused on helping with best practices for onboarding, deployment, and all of that sort of thing. And I was hearing that for the CNF working group, the test suite, the test bed, all of the stuff that we've been doing for years. Like where are the best practices that are going to help with onboarding? And I think that's why we're seeing projects like NEFIO that are focused on that particular area. Of course, there's GitOps and what WeaveWorks and other people are doing as well. Okay, maybe it's worth bringing, I might move this down. Yeah, there's a, potential for other, you know, let's start making a list of other topics that might be of interest to the community like this. Um, Okay. Um, anything else on on this informal uh, day? Okay, so let's have a look at the issues and the PRs. Uh, so open PRs. Um, there's a PR open, do not run containers with a privileged flag. Flag. Okay, that's got loads of approvals. I think we can merge that. Any objections to me merging this? Look for approvals. No okay. I'll do so then. Um, the other one Merge after the 21st meeting. Okay, so we'll leave that for now. So, um, rather than going through these one by one, is there any update on any of the issues in terms of people newly assigning themselves to something or working on something? Well, uh, in my case, I started reviewing the likeness uh, proof. Uh, it's 251 issue. Um, yeah, I think it's there is a lot of things to uh, maybe to discuss there. Uh, so I, I encourage to take a look and uh, to the Google Docs. Uh, there is a link on the bottom. So 
do we have any pull requests that we can close out before we dig into the open ones? Oh, well, uh, yeah, he, he just showed the, that one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, there's the, only the one open on it anymore. Oh, great. I didn't see the the other one got closed out. So we, I, I don't think that we, one thing to remember that I, I didn't do, and hopefully we'll do on the next one, um, Victor, whoever, mm -hmm. update the best practices for dev um, document to add a best new best practice into the document. So if we've we've just accepted the privilege flag best practice, but it's not in the list of um, list of practices. We just have the document in the docs directory. So mm -hmm. ideally going forward, and maybe we need like to update instructions. If you're going to do a pull request for a new best practice, also add it into the, the dev document. Does, does what I'm saying make sense? Yeah, in that way we can uh, have references in, in other places. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to be able to point people, hey, there's new best practices that were just published and they're in the in this one document. So we just keep pointing them to the one main document and they're seeing more and more best practices there. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's right. All right, cool. Let's jump back in that liveness, I guess. So, so regarding liveness, um, yeah, thanks, thanks Taylor for for starting the discussion there. Um, yeah, it is it is very like a, I mean, the the only thing that I was thinking about that particular best practice is um, how can we what could be exactly the, the best practice besides defining aliveness proofs in, in the in the pod definition. I mean, I was just thinking loudly, like maybe uh, some proportion or some numbers or how to calculate the different parameters or things like that. So um, Yeah, that's that's why I, I I would like to to open the discussion there. Like, uh, if someone has some ideas, not not only to to encourage people to use that particular feature, most mostly how to use it in the best way, like a, a specific numbers or certain. Uh, proportions I think that that could be a, a, a good good idea like I don't know if that makes sense what I'm saying but um, you see my point yeah I think you were had some reference links to some stuff can you bring up the the liveness? Probe uh, 251, Tom. Sorry, I thought I'd come and back. Then, no worries. Um, and then scroll down. So this one's pretty minimal. There's some references here. And maybe click on the doc the, in the comment down below. There's a comment. Yeah. I think this one might have more. The interaction. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The well, the the red is I think copied from somewhere else, so all of that needs to be filled. So yeah. what do you have there on the side, Victor? Let's see. Um, this is motivation. Fast fill pattern. Yeah, exactly. It's like uh, I was just thinking about um, maybe what could be the, the benefits to use this. Uh -huh. uh, the only one that came to my mind was uh, fail fast. If, 
if your pod is behaving bad, so just terminate it and get a new one. So I guess that's very important to have a light, lightness probe there. Um, but it started like when I started investigating more about the, the feature, like a, so the, there is obviously a lot of ways to define it. Like the first one is like the type of a lightness probe, which could be four different types by common, by HTTP and TCP requests or ERCP. And, and also there are ones that you choose uh, the type of uh, lightness proof. So you have to define certain parameters. So the thing is like, um, I mean, you can choose whatever that adjusts to your needs, but I don't know if like uh, that could be like a good practice to um, have some like like different portion, like depending on the number, for example, let's say that uh, the best, I don't know, the initial delay in seconds uh, parameter has some kind of relation with the period in sec and seconds uh, or things like that. So I think if someone has playing around with those numbers and can give us some like rules of thumb or something like that where we can use as a as a best practice that could be also great like uh, having some 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 numbers or some some things that can people use it in a real world so do you think that and of course, I'm just talking discussion here. Are you thinking that those would be part of the main best practice, or would we put those down in the like the notes section? And can you scroll down, Tom, to the so this says notes, caveats, and constraints. It doesn't have to be negatives. Okay. or alternatives we can have it for additional information that we're not saying you must do these things so these could be maybe less strong recommendations but here's some things to look at so what what are you thinking that would it be something more of here's something that you should look at and consider or do you think it should be part of the best main best practice what were you thinking victor well, first of all, the, the first the first step is having that information. <laughs> I think if we have that information, yeah, probably the best place to to put that information could be in that section notes. It's a note, um, but yeah, I, I couldn't find like a a quick search uh, those those kind of uh, information. Um, but if we have it, definitely maybe that's the best place to, to put that information. Um, yeah, the, the only thing that I, I will avoid to have it is very standard, like, uh, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's for sure, like, lightness proofs are a great thing to to monitor the, the healthy of the, the CNF or any um, application in general, but, but yeah, I would like to see something more in full, like a... Um, um, and if we have that information, probably, yeah, that's the best place maybe to put in in this section as a as an additional note. Yeah, I don't know, for example, like um, if if you choose like a very um, small time frame, maybe, you can have an impact on your CPU probably. Um, I'm not saying, I don't know, like, like uh, let's say that you choose like a one millisecond or something like that. So every one millisecond is calling your command that you def have defined in the, the lightness proof. So which probably can be translated as like over using the CPU to just to monitor the, the app itself. So, I think I think ha it has to be a balance between um, the amount of resources that you are using in in the app versus the amount of resources that you are using to monitor the 
the healthiness of the app. But yeah, probably I, I need to dig more in this idea because that's the only thing that I came to my mind. I just wanted to bring in that topic in this 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 meeting. Yeah, I guess it depends a, a little bit on the type of the function that you think. If it's something that's on the critical path, you would most likely want to know immediately its state, right? I mean, when it fails and stops responding. If it's something like, I don't know, user management, something, yeah, I mean, you don't need to ping it too often, right, to probe it if it's still there. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. So for me, that seems like content that will be go into this what we're calling notes section um you know maybe this could have a better um title there but if you're implementing this best practice then here's some things you should look into and here's some things you should be aware of so you don't have problems as well as there may be we, you know, we may say, don't set it to liveness where it checks every 20 minutes. If you can even do that, I don't know if, if they, uh, Kubernetes constrains it, but I think there's a, something that would be too high and then something too, too often. But it, it seems like something that we could put into this area and then it would be encouraging people to think about those things. Yeah, I agree. But I guess in general, like uh, let's let's try to get some feedback of, about these uh, best practice. I guess uh, again, Taylor, thanks for. Uh, putting all these uh, together and, and start the conversation, but yeah, definitely we need extra eyes on the on here on this document. How's, how's that? Just as a start, I can delete the red since we actually have some content and then reworded that portion a little bit and then we can add more content on that section. I think that we, we are missing the, the Nikolai comment about uh, the, all depends on the, the type of the, the workload. So probably, I don't know if you want to. Absolutely. I was just putting this as kind of a start. Um, TBD, we need to add more. Okay. Um, TBD, add information about the type of workload and the... Um, Criticality. Or... <laughs> um, and say that again. Criticality? I don't know if that is a word. <laughs> Uh, How critical yeah. is it like <laughs> each of these numbers, each CPU? Um, question so with um, okay. These are these are just for us to talk about. 
and anyone can come and do suggest edits on these. If you want to directly work with us on these um, and you feel like this is a topic, then let me know. We can even give direct edit access. Right now, it's anyone with link can add comments and suggest edits. So you can, of course, add comments like Victor's done, but you can also just do a suggest edit. So it can look like this. Um, so this is, what is this? Liveness, all pod types should have liveness checks. And then that's gonna be there as a suggest edit. I'm gonna remove this when we just have that. So now, um, that's there. So this is for those who haven't done this. Um, anyone that doesn't have edit access, you just start typing or deleting or changing. It'll come up like this. And then we can simply check it and add that in. So definitely encourage folks to add anything here. And I do want to point out that we have Oh, you may not see where I did that. Sorry, I forgot uh, this. I wouldn't share my screen. Tom, can you go up to workload context so that my words don't sound? Yep, there we go. Yep, see that? So that yep. one's, and now I can, that one's a suggest edit. And then I can, um, any of us that have edit access can just accept that as a change. So, um, you know, Nikolai, you feel free to just add stuff into any of these. Um, before we run out of time, I do want to point out that all of the GitHub issues that are best practice proposals, I believe all of them, um, if there's any missing, let us know. I think all of them have links to draft Google Docs for each of the best practice so that um, we can have people just add directly to those and work with us. Um, of course, people can add comments to the GitHub issues, but if they want to directly add comment or comments to it, the draft documents, I definitely appreciate that. What else do we have on the agenda to close it out, Tom? I think that's it for today's agenda. Uh, um, well, in, in the, the event, uh, I just noticed that in the Open Source Summit in North America, there are going to be a, a, a collocated event, uh, the LFN Networking Mini One Summit. So I just put it there. Okay. Nice. I noticed the one summit had disappeared from the list of events. That'd be why. So that's that's in that's in Vancouver as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. That's in May. All right, and that's um, nearly back to back to the big five G event. Hoping to see some of y'all there. Um, there's a lot of parties. A lot of different, sorry, telecom orgs, not parties. Uh, I was saying parties for orgs. There probably will be parties, but hoping to see um, folks there and trying to have a CNCF presence at Big Five. I, for those that don't know, I'm actually local to Austin. I'm planning on going. Uh, whatever the case, and try to promote Cloud Native and Meetup, there's a pretty large group of people. It seems to be more open to, I'll just say general telecom versus the, there's another event, which I'm not seeing on the, in this list. Oh, maybe Connected America, I think, is more specific to 
telecom for North America. And I think this big 5G would just be open. So Tom, like Vodafone, I take a, I would at least take a look and then make sure that folks know, but I think it, it would probably be a good event for anyone, even if you're not a North American telecom. Yeah, I'll, I'll share the details. I, I suspect we'll struggle, but just given the location. Yeah. That seems to be the case with travel right now, unfortunately. I thought we were getting done with that post as well. I know we're not totally done with COVID, but getting a little better on travel. But Oh, it's nothing right to do with COVID. <laughs> it's about money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, and the One Summit event, I don't, we should look into that for our own collaboration, mm -hmm. a group, and, and what we're trying to do. Thanks for noting that. Thank you. Okay, let's let's close the call because we've run a bit over. But thanks all. Um, catch you next week. Cheers. Same time. Thanks. Bye. Perfect. Thank you. Bye.